Hello and welcome. A bit of a law video today, and I'm Raziel. And so, this law video is more about a. Well, it's not a law video, really. It's a retconning video. A video about a retcon, which kind of bothers me more than it really should, because there was a better way of doing this. Have everything play out the same way, but. And actually, fit the scenario, fit the universe far better than it really does. Now, we all know 40k is grimdark. Now, I hope I made the air quotes very obvious there. Because there is very few instances of it actually being grim dark. There's plenty of instances of it being violent, very many, and lots of it being gory. But to call it grim dark is to like to say that all the horror genre is grim dark. And with that said, that 40k and Warhammer actually has a horror genre now. So it can't be grim dark if you have a horror series or horror genre. So. This retconning is of one of the, my favourite Eldar, Aldrad Ulfwan. If you know your Eldar lore, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, Aldrad Ulfwan during the 13th Black Crusade decided that the, he had just had enough of chaos. He had just completely sick of their nonsense and decided, yeah, I'm going to stop this Blackstone Fortress. Now, Blackstone Fortresses are incredibly powerful to the point that they can destroy stars. Three of them destroyed the Tarantus Star. And, Al and Abaddon had these three. And he was obviously off to the last three. So there was six of them. Now there's only five. Because, you know, Abaddon being the big baby, he did decide to throw one into a planet to destroy Cadia. You know, he could have just shot it. I mean, he had his uh, World Eat World Destroyer gun, his big ship, which wasn't the Avengers Spirit. He actually had a bigger ship. And he could have used that to destroy Cadia from a while away. So he didn't even have to be within this, you know, that close to the system to destroy it. But, you know, Abaddon being Abaddon decided that he had to get up close and personal. So, but what happened was Aldrad decided that he had another chaos of nonsense and he opened a warp portal or warp tear, mixed his psychic energy with the corrupted heart of the Blackstone Fortress and basically destroyed it. That was it. At the end of Aldrad, he had died, he had died a hero, and he had destroyed a Blackstone Fortress at the same time, having it launched into the warp. Then if it comes back, it's going to come back a lot worse. Now, what 40k and Games Workshop did, is they decided that what didn't happen, and that instead of doing that, Aldred Orphan decided to raise Yekan. Now, Yekan, Yenari, and Yfrain are obviously about, all about the God of Death for the Elder. This isn't a new story, this is not something that Games Workshop has brought up in 7th edition. This actually started in 3rd edition, in the Craftworld Eldar supplement. And it was actually pretty good that he had been... That, I like it, I like it when they do that. Like The this story has been about for a while and they're going to in, reintroduce it. But I think the way they've done it was kind of bad because, of course, he got there. He managed to... the Farseers gave up their lives. And just as it was meant to happen, the Death Watch showed up and decided to ruin his day. Okay. Now, if I was, what I would have done, in my opinion, which would, is that I would have had Aldrad to remain dead at this point, and it would have been one of his successors or his underlings, who was also a Farseer, you know, had gone so long the Seer path that he had stuck. They were stuck on it, and decided to continue. Uh, Aldrad's work because Aldrad, because of it, ended up being cast out of Ulfway, and you know, a lot of bad things happened. You, you know, he like Bill Tan getting absolutely wrecked because of the sword. Now, Aldrad being dead would have made this a lot better because you got this guy, he knows what he's doing, he knows how important a craft world is. He wouldn't, I can't see why he would have taken the Ephraim to Bill Tan to destroy it just to get a sword. Yeah, that sounds like a rookie mistake. Now, if it was an underling who was aware of Aldrad's workings, but not aware of the power or the risks involved, would have taken your frame to build hand, assuming that, you know, that the sword might have been up on, you know, some sort of shelf, some sort of you know, ornamentation, not actually within the bowels that needed to destroy build hand for, that makes it more sense. And then you could have the more grim dog version, of course, which, and this is where it could have been really dark, but Abaddon still slams, starts a new crusade, and ends up slamming another black fortress into Cadia. 
Now, the reason that would be more darker would mean that Eldred's sacrifice pretty much meant nothing. A craft world's been wrecked, cages gone, and there's still more black fortresses around, which are under Abaddon's control, and he's willing to use them. And that is something I've seen in 40k a lot, that they don't really have this way of going full grim dark. They sort of like go up to the line and go, right, that's it. And uh, where we see this most prominently, believe it or not, is the Imperial Fists. It's kind of one of the reasons I really don't like them as a chapter or a legion, is because they never, if this includes their successes as well, but they die a lot and they do die, but they complete their mission. I mean, there is no um, faultless, um, hopeless sacrifice, there's no sac, uh, no, no, um, waste of human life or waste of space when they die. That's it. If you take the War of the Beast, the entire chapter got wiped out. And rather than saying, yeah, that's it, Imperial Fists are gone, and I'm trying to rebuild it with the original Gene Seed, not having them suddenly saved by all their successors, that means that anything they did or anything they sacrificed for was pretty much moot at this point, because they actually didn't sacrifice anything. And... If you sacrifice something, it has to be worthwhile. Which is why Sanguinius dying is so important to the storyline. And bringing him back would mean a lot. Would be bad. Because he sacrificed himself so the Emperor could live. And the Imperium would be saved. Well, you know what I mean. Saved as in not what it was to become. So, this is what I mean. So, Aldrad could have had this, you know, pointless sacrifice have his given up his life to destroy a black zone fortress only for Abaddon to use a different one to just slam into Cadia only to have for Cadia be destroyed and the entire planet be ripped in half now the reason that uh, Aldrad was looking up the Khan and all that was because of the Ranadandra the Ranadandra is the end of chaos and the end of the Eldar and Aldrad really didn't like that the second part that the Eldar were going to die all of them were going to die. The last one to fall would be Fugan, the best one ever. Now, reason you can obviously tell why you know Eldred wasn't a big fan of all the Eldar dying, even if it meant the destruction of all chaos. Yeah, that's the important part to take home here. Yet, yeah, all chaos was going to be destroyed by the Eldari. While there are also some sources that say it was going to be a you know a co an effort of an allied effort between the humans and the Eldari, but it was the Eldari that were going to all die. Drukari, all of them. All of them going to die. And yeah, Aldred wasn't a fan of this. And he didn't want it to happen. So there you go. Anyway, that's basically the biggest retcon which I see in 40k. Which needed to, didn't need to happen. I think it could have gone well if they had an underling. Go f instead, you know, continue Aldred's work. Make the mistakes that Aldred was going to make. But it would be a rookie mistake. It would be someone who wasn't experienced. Someone who didn't know what they were doing. Someone who only had read Aldred's writings. And, you know... Aldar being Aldar, not getting the full glimpse of it because they decided to be pretty much completely mystic and en enigmatic with it all. Anyway, what's your thoughts? What's your favourite part of the Aldar? What's your favourite retcon? Or what's your least favourite retcon as well? Thank you very much. And that's all i got to say. Leave your comments down below. I'll see you all again in the next one and have a great day. There is Raylan Games down below. If Yes, Raylan Games down below if you wish to save up to 20% on your Warhammer and free delivery after £20. There of course is what else? A Forbidden Planet as well. Back pretty cool. Comics, funk, pops, toys, books, DVDs, anime, all that cool stuff. And there is my merchandise, you know, cups, t-shirts, comics, you know, all the cool stuff that everyone else does. I do it too. And finally there is Patreon. But as I said before, I'm pretty much going to kill Patreon once it's, I can monetize these and get you know get sponsors uh, because I don't want to ask for money if someone else is going to pay me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and see you again soon. Bye bye.